Hi everyone and welcome back to a new Angular 6 and Spring Boot episode. Today we are going to continue on episode 22 and discuss more advanced testing techniques. More specifically, we are going to see how we can mock HTTP requests using the HTTP client mock. And we are doing this because in most web applications, you know, HTTP requests play uh, a fundamental role because uh, they are the mechanism by which we bring in data into our systems and a lot of components and services will depend upon executing HTTP requests. So we're going to see how we can mock that and make everything that depends on HTTP unit testable. And we're also going to see how we can create you know, more advanced tests where uh, that have more dependencies and how to instantiate those dependencies. So. Uh, we're going to cover mocks and test setup. So we're going to create an HTTP client mock. We're going to see how we can use the before each method to instantiate our, our mocks and our dependencies and our data before each test is run. And we are also going to execute unit tests against the HTTP client and see uh, how our components are behaving. Cool, so we have a lot of code to write. Uh, before we start, I want to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for more courses that will sharpen your programming skills. Okay, let's start. We are going to test our API service. Now, the API service itself is responsible for handling all of our HTTP requests. So it grabs the notebooks, the notes, it posts feedback, it does all sorts of cool things. And then the API service is used in all of our other components as a dependency. And the API service itself has a dependency on the HTTP client. It uses the HTTP client to perform those requests and then you know, it exposes them in a nicer way in our app. And we are going to test this service because one, we're going to see how we can test um, you know, services or constructs that have dependencies in our case, the HTTP client. And we're also going to see how we can mock the HTTP client in order to perform our testing. So we'll hit two rabbits uh, with just one, uh, one course. Cool. So uh, again, this API service has a test file called an API service.spec.ts. It was created using the Angular CLI. And I have just commented it out. Okay, I'll just decomment it. And now, okay, we don't have any any test written in here. So what I want to do is we actually want to run ng test now in order to see how our tests are uh, executing, you know, live. And then we will start and run and write our test for this service. And I think we can test the um, one method here. Let's pick, you know, get get all notebooks. You know, let's test that get all notebooks performs an HTTP request and grabs what you want from the server. Okay, so our tests are in instantiating. Cool. Cool. So all the tests are running, and this is just awesome. Cool. Now, um, let's define our HTTP mock. So HTTP mock is of type HTTP testing controller. So this is a built-in type uh, written by the Angular team, especially for this, for the purpose of, you know, testing HTTP requests. And then I also want to define my API service, you know, in here, okay? So uh, now that we have our HTTP mock and API service variables, I want to instantiate them before each test is run. So if I have three tests, I want them to be instantiated three times before each test. And this is uh, very important because if you have, you know, more tests and we modify the state of one component or one, you know, class in one test, we don't want that modification to propagate to the other tests and possibly, you know, spoil our test results. So we want to instantiate them at the beginning of each test. And we do that in the before each method. So the before each method is executed before each test is run. So this is a pretty good opportunity for us to instantiate HTTP mock API service and leave them in a clean state before, you know, uh, actually executing our own test. Now, um, we have provided the API service. 
but the API service is dependent upon HTTP. So we actually have to uh, grab uh, the HTTP testing module. So imports, and we are going to import the HTTP. I think it's testing module. I think it's, I hope it's like this. Um, the HTTP or test module. I don't really know. Okay, but I think it's testing. Uh, the intelligence is not helping me. Okay, HTTP testing module. Okay, it's my IntelliJ is moving, you know, kind of slow. Okay, so we have the HTTP testing module here. Okay, and we need that because, you know, um, the API service, you know, uh, depends upon the HTTP client. So when we create it in our test, uh, Angular needs to have a way to be able to inject this HTTP client in our API service. And that's the reason why we need to import it uh, in our test suite so that the Angular dependency injection mechanism knows how to run it. And of course I made a mistake, it's not testing module, is uh, HTTP client testing module. Okay, so my bad, sorry about that, okay. Cool, and now that we have our dependencies, what we can do is we can actually come here and instantiate them. So I'm going to say HTTP mock is, you know, I'm going to get a test bed and I'm going to get an instance of HTTP testing controller, okay? And this is resolved via dependency injection because in our test bed, we have configured, you know, our provider and uh, we have imported the testing module and now we are using dependency injection to get an instance of this class and with that we're going to populate the HTTP mock. And we're also going to populate the API service. So again, get this bed, get, you know, API service. So here we pass in the type uh, of the construct that we want to inject. And now that we have this in place, like I said, at the beginning of each test, we'll execute this and we will um, reinstantiate our HTTP mock and API service, you know, objects. Cool. And now we are ready to, you know, start writing some tests. So the first thing that I want to test is that, you know, my service is being constructed correctly. So uh, this is a pretty standard test to do, uh, especially if you want to resolve all your dependencies. So if you want to test a service with multiple dependencies, the first test that you should do in your testing suite is that, uh, you, you can inject those dependencies into your service and that's the dependency injection mechanism works because if that doesn't work, you'll not be able to write any test. So it is created and this is a very, very simple test. I'm just going to expect that the API service um, exists, I think, or is not... Um, Uh, to be null, to be truth, yeah. So I'm expecting that this service actually got created, okay? So, okay, I have four tests, my test passed, so we are completely sure that we can construct an API service and that the dependency resolution in our test worked. Cool, so now we're ready to start testing our methods, okay? So uh, let's test the get all notebooks method, so the API service should get all notebooks from HTTP, okay? This is our test. Okay, uh, and now let's start to define our dummy data. So again, we are going to use the arrange, you know, act and assert pattern. We didn't use it here because it, it was just a one-liner, so there was no reason to do it. So let's define our dummy notebooks that we will simulate, um, uh, that we will use to simulate the HTTP GET request. So let dummy notebooks of type, I think it's notebook array, and we will add, you know, one thing here. So I think we need to pass in the ID one, to pass it the name 
so this is the this is the default notebook and we need to pass in the number of nodes and we'll pass in zero okay so our dummy notebooks number of made a mistake here cool so our dummy notebooks is a list of notebooks and we just uh, have one notebook defined in here and that's perfectly perfectly fine okay cool uh, now that we have done this let's go ahead and you know actually execute our service so in act we can say you know API service gets all notebooks and remember that in order to send a, in, an HTTP request we need to subscribe to it okay and after the request is executed we will get a response and now I want to perform expectations against this response so I'm expecting that response dot length um, to be one because sorry and I'm also expecting the response to equal uh, the dummy notebooks okay so I'm performing uh, expected arguments yeah so I'm performing I'm, I'm calling the get all notebooks on my API service I am um, subscribing to it and then when I receive the response I'm expecting that I have one notebook so this one and that you know the list of notebooks is equal to what I have defined here okay but this won't work right now because uh, we actually need to provide a behavior you know for our um, HTTP mock okay and um, actually I'm going to modify this here because you know writing HTTP tests kind of involves a different um, structure so I'm defining a request HTTP mock and here I have to match the URL of the request that I'm making so I need to be able to grab this URL over here okay but I can't grab it right now because this um, this property is private so I'm going to go ahead and make it public okay to be able to access it from here so I want to access it from here so API service uh, all notebooks URL okay and basically what we're seeing here is uh, we have an expectation on our HTTP mock to perform a request to this URL and we are also expecting that the actual request method to be get okay so here we want to make sure that our HTTP call is actually being executed against this URL and using the get method and then to actually populate the results uh, we, we can use the request object and just you know flush the response uh, back to our um, caller and we are going to pass the response that is obtained via this HTTP call so this is how we set up the HTTP mock I know it's a little bit you know it looks cumbersome but you know let's try to run our test and see if it's working so we have five tests out of five and we go here everything works perfectly so let's look a little bit at the anatomy of this HTTP test because it looks a little bit different from what we've done so far now okay this part I think is pretty obvious so we define the dummy notebooks that we want to simulate uh, in our test so this is the data that we will receive after making an HTTP call then before setting up our HTTP mock we need to make the actual request so we need to test our system in our case we call the get all notebooks method which internally uses the HTTP client and then we subscribe to that result and then we make our expectations so this is what we expect from our test that uh, we have one notebook and that the notebook that we get is the one that we received via HTTP and then when we set up our mock 
we expect that a call is made to the correct URL that the method is get and then when the response comes in we flush in so we replace the HTTP response with you know what we have defined in here and this is one way to simulate uh, HTTP calls and to test them uh, in Angular 6 applications. Before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.